Hello, welcome to Lords, the start of the test summer uh, here, of course, in England. And it's a fairly traditional start, isn't it? The covers are on. Uh, it's drizzled for much of the day, affecting the team's preparations. But it's not a bad forecast uh, looking forward. Both teams have been announced. Of course, England yesterday, Crawley, Duckett, Pope, Root, Brook, Stokes, Smith, Wokes, Atkinson, Basher and Anderson and the West Indies announced theirs this morning as well. Craig Brathwaite, the captain. Uh, Mikhail Louis comes in at number two, the first St. Kishan uh, to play Test cricket. Kirk McKenzie, Alec Athanas, Kavam Hodge, Jason Holder, Joshua De Silva, the keeper, Gurukesh Moti, Alzari Joseph, Shama Joseph and Jaden Seal. So that's how the West Indies will line up. Um, with me here, I've got uh, Fazio Mahmoud. Lovely to see you again, Fazio. After what was the last time you were here covering Test series for years now? Probably would have been 2017. Great uh, to have you back. Because I couldn't make it because of COVID 2020. Yeah, uh, correct. So good to be back. Yeah, well, it's lovely to have you here. Uh, and of course, Stefan Schemelt, our uh, chief cricket writer, is also here too. Let's just go through his team, shall we? Stefan, first of all, you were there in Darren Shallow when England last played uh, a Test match. It's certainly, a, it's certainly a changed. It's a changed-looking team. And as we'll hear uh, from Ben Stokes uh, a little later on in this podcast, there is now an eye to the future. I know we've got to get past this Test match first. But, you know, certainly my experience of, of covering cricket, the teams haven't really wanted to look forward and talk about ashes of 18 months ahead. They say, oh, no, 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 we're focusing on this. In fact, they wouldn't even talk about the ashes two months ahead when Andy Flower's in charge. No doubt now, ashes there is like a beacon in the future and the changes are starting. It's really interesting, isn't it, mm. that for two years, Ben Stokes, Brendan McCullum, anyone in the England team who was talking would tell us, live where your feet are. Mm. We are staying in the moment. We are concentrating on this. Now, the rhetoric has changed completely. They're looking forward, quite open about it. Um, really interesting as well, a week after um, Ben Stokes was getting some flack in the Australian press for the mm. documentary that the ECB have just released, and he was tweeting back to them. Um, really open, don't think it will go unnoticed in Australia. You're right to mention Durham Sharla, because that really did feel like a full stop. It did to us, mm. if England weren't admitting it Brendan McCullum was pretty open after that but he just felt like change was coming I don't know if we quite knew it was going to be as dramatic as it has been certainly the wicket keeping position mm. um, felt up for debate and England have made the change they've moved on from from Ben Folks and Johnny Bairstow and brought in Jamie Smith did we think they were going to tap Jamie Anderson on the shoulder even if it does feel like the right decision did we think England were really going to do that or they were going to leave it to Anderson himself well that's what they've done and then I think the spinner is actually the one I'm most surprised about um, Jack Leach didn't finish that series in India he didn't get through the Ashes series he felt vulnerable but he's such a key Stokes ally, isn't he? Mm, he's, been, he's been next to Ben Stokes for so many big moments. I thought that Leach would probably survive, but England like what they see in Shoei Bashir. And again, Stokes is talking about Bashir's credentials for going to Australia. He's a tall off spinner. He'll get bounce on those hard pitches. They were really excited by what they saw from him from his three caps in India. And he gets the nod. So it's a bit of an odd dynamic where you've got Jamie Smith keeping for England, not keeping for Surrey. Shoei Bashir, not the first choice spinner mm -hmm. for Somerset, but is the first choice spinner for England. But I like that England team. It, it looks exciting. It looks fresh. Ben Stokes said it's not a reboot, but it is really, isn't it? Well, it is a reboot. And it's a change. It's a complete change of emphasis, really. And when they first came together, it was crisis management, trying to get a team together just to try and win some games after that awful run that they had. But now it is more what you expect of of international management, of, of, of looking ahead to the future. I mean, personally, yeah, I mean, look, we love watching Jimmy Anderson over the years. It feels like absolutely the right decision to say, have you won game? Thanks so much. We now have to move on. And I think he's accepted that. And I think you'll accept, Fazzy, that we were talking about Jimmy for, for, for some of this time, aren't we? I mean, it's, 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 it's going to be pretty special here to say goodbye to one of the game's greatest bowlers. Absolutely. And, and in, in, in an interesting way, the, the Jimmy Anderson situation, uh, you, you talked about that awful run that, that England had which culminated in that loss in Grenada yes, by 10 wickets. Yep. That's and a car crash. Where, and, and indeed, where, where Jimmy Anderson and Stuart Broad weren't involved. Yep. So so when you talk about the, the Ashes, and I know there's, there's this thing about the Ashes, it, it almost seems as it's a bit, a bit of a disrespect to the Westernies and other nations that is always about looking forward to an Ashes or just looking back on an Ashes. <laughs> so essentially, that, that's what is, And I think that's a motivation for the West Indies to say, well, OK, you'll be preoccupied with your Ashes or whatever. We're going to try and be a lot more competitive than you think you, we might be. Yeah. It'll be very interesting to see how Anderson does react. I mean, he 
he's a very undemonstrative character, really. He can get a bit fired up on the field at times, but generally very focused, shy. We know that. Could get himself in a bit of a grumpy mood sometimes. Had a terrific sit down with him yesterday uh, in, in the pavilion there, in the, in the committee room. Uh, a, a full half hour, which you'll be able to hear properly tomorrow, actually, during uh, the lunch break as well on, on Test Match Special. But uh, here's, here's a little taster of, uh, of what Jimmy was talking to me about yesterday. Looking forward to it. Got a lot of family and friends coming down for it as well. Um, some hope in that they do the emotional side of it and I can just get on with yeah. playing cricket and enjoying it one last time. Which is what you've always done basically, isn't it? That's, yeah. that's kind of been your, your mantra. Yeah, I think that, you know, that's why, I'm, or why I've done what I have for such a long period of time because I've been able to focus on my job and doing it to the best of my ability and never settling for being as, as good as I might have got, just always trying to improve and even the last few weeks knowing that these la- these two games could well be my last in first class cricket let alone test cricket um, I've still wanted to train hard practice well and make sure I'm uh, giving a good account of myself Did you need the tap on the shoulder? I mean, Would, 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 would you have carried on? Did you, do you have plans to carry on for this summer? Yeah well I, I felt after India you know I feel physically as in good a shape as I ever have. Uh, felt like I bowled pretty well in India. Um, so coming home from that in my head, you know, I, I was just looking ahead to the summer and trying to plot my way through the summer with what county games I need to play, etc. And just work that out. Obviously didn't look much further than this summer. Um, but then obviously the, the tap on the shoulder came. So, um, you know, obviously, a lot of people have always told me that you'd know when the time's right, like Stuart, um, Alistair Cook, you know, people close to me that have retired have always sort of known when the right time to go is. Um, I don't know if that would ever, ever come for me. I don't know, it could have been one of those things where I, I did need a tap on the shoulder to say, um, we want to go in a different direction. So um, something I've got to accept and I have done in the last couple of months. Um, and now I feel excited for this week and I feel excited for the, the future as well and what that might hold. That was Jimmy Anderson talking to me uh, in depth. And say so you'll hear that interview in full, all sorts of stuff in there about the techniques of bowling and so on. That's on a podcast tomorrow morning or during the lunch break on Test Match Special uh, on the first day here at Lords. So just a last thought. I mean, he's... He's, he's not. He's not going to like the attention. I don't think he's. He, he just doesn't. He's just not that sort of person. And and also, I was, we'll hear from Stokes in a minute. I've been talking to him about how the team have to keep focused. You know, they've had Stuart Broad bowing out in the last Test match here at the Oval. Uh, you know, all that stuff. Um, and they've got another one going going now. And yet, as we've said already today, it is about getting this team together, building for the future. And there's some. some players here for this is, this is a massive event not least Jamie Smith the keeper. somehow they've just got to keep keep a level head and focused on what they're doing actually on the field there's a lot going on isn't there actually yeah, there is. for this yeah. test match and that, that sounds like an obvious thing to say when you've got one of England's all time greatest cricketers bowing out but you're quite right to point out Ags actually it's a big game for a number of players in this England team uh, and it's going to be really interesting how England manage that and make sure that the focus isn't just on Jimmy Anderson because you think Stuart Broad got an amazing farewell his last ball for six took a wicket with yeah. his, his last delivery somehow they must, yeah stage manage that mm-hmm. somehow to go out of test cricket in the perfect fashion um it's just going to be a really yeah. special occasion is it Jimmy Anderson going out on, on the ground where he made his test debut um it makes me sort of feel about all the things that have happened to me in the past 21 years where where we were as individuals 21 years ago we've watched James Anderson grow up in front of our eyes you think about that that lad who had the the stripe in his hair back then and all the things that you've gone through in it and it's almost comforting sometimes to see the same sports people turn up day after day year after year they become a presence in our lives yeah. Jimmy Anderson's not going to be there anymore no absolutely uh, we'll talk about those debutants in a second um, but yeah, let's just reflect again on the on the Jimmy Anderson show tomorrow but there is still that test match to be won those two new debutants as I mentioned and I've been catching up with the England captain Ben Stokes well, Ben, it's been a long time coming. You're looking forward to this? Very much so, yes. Yeah. felt like an age. Um, obviously, I think 
five months um, since we've since we've had our lovely interviews the day before a test match. Um, but yeah, no, it's so excited to be back. Um, could do with the weather being a little bit better, but yeah, it's always exciting. Um, you know, with the preparation around the first test match of the summer and uh, I'm sure the public are, are raring to go as well yeah inevitably I've got to talk about Jimmy Anderson because that's kind of what this this game whether you like it or not is going to be largely about and what well, your opportunity to, to pay a tribute to him and what he's done he's been amazing um you know 100 and this is going to be his 188th test match as a as a fast bowler it's just incredible um and you know something that should be admired by everyone all around the world we've got so much admiration for him in the in the dressing room um been someone who every young fast bowler um should look up to not only with his um longevity or his skill but just you know his complete utter professionalism towards the game and also his desire and hunger to constantly get better um he's he's a legend of english cricket uh, but also you know a legend of of the game um so Rightly so, this this week in this test match um, is all going to be about Jimmy Anderson, um, and he thoroughly deserves it. As a bowler yourself, what is it particularly that you admire? I mean, back in the day, me, I had no plan B if the ball didn't swing, but he, he's made himself relevant th- th- throughout the throughout game, hasn't he, with what he's done? Yeah, I think if you look at Jimmy's career as a whole, you know, I think you look at how he's just got better and better as time's gone by, and again, that is testament to his work ethic of figuring out different ways to be able to bowl when certain conditions aren't in 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 his favor if that makes sense you know he's obviously got the nickname of king king of swing but also the the skill set he's added to his armory over the years has just been amazing and um you know that's again credit to himself but his stats and and everything like that has just got better year on year on year on and that's through hard work and, and determination to always wanting to be putting in match winning performances for england so um yeah, just just incredible, and finishing up with over 700 Test wickets is a very very special thing to say as a fast bowler. Yeah, how how do you stop it from actually all being about Jimmy Anderson? I mean, you had that situation with Stuart Broad, obviously at the end of the Ashes as well. I mean, it's how, how do you keep the focus actually on the team as well? Oh well, I think that's that's up to us, and uh, Jimmy will not be uh, Jimmy is not the type of person to to make this week like that. Although it's going to be very hard not to with the public, the crowd and, and everyone wanting to come here and, and watch Jimmy go at it for one last time. Um, Jimmy's eye is, is on winning this game and contributing towards that and that's what he's always been about. Um, and I'm sure when when this game is over, that's when sort of everything will will, will probably um, settle in more in terms of, of that thing, if you know what I mean. But I know, you know, speaking to Jimmy, we've it's not really even been a, been a topic um, all he's thinking about is, is what he needs to do to go out there and, and take wickets and, and win the game for England. You were in the meeting that, that, that broke the news from me, if you like, and it was a little tap on the shoulder. Is, is that, that's Ash's planning, presumably. I mean, you can now look ahead to that, I guess. Is that, is that the reason? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, we've had so such a long period since we've played Test cricket, and when you have a long period of time, you um, you obviously start thinking about how can we progress this team forward because that's what we want to do um, you know, we don't want to be standing still um, we want to and I want to keep making this team push themselves as hard as they possibly can and if you look in 18 months time of where we're, where we're going and what the Ashes is um, you know, we had to make some decisions around what we think is best for the team going into that series um, we've got some amazing young talented bowlers coming through at the moment in English cricket and we feel giving them the opportunity to go out there and get experience um, at the highest level is going to put us in a much better position come Australia because we want to go out there and we want to get that own back Is it a sort of a different position that you and Brendan McCullum find yourselves in now when you took over it was kind of crisis management really having to do something here and now getting the winning games again but now you, you are planning ahead more is that, is that a fair comment? Yeah definitely and again all I want to do is, is, is progress this team um, I think we've made some unbelievable strides over the last two years um, but now we sort of find ourselves here where right what can we do now to to make this team even better um, I'm not one person for wanting to stand still as a player myself and being in charge of this team um, I don't want that to to be the same for the team if that makes sense um, you know I want to push this team as far as we possibly can go and um, progressing us as a team progressing the players as individuals as much as I possibly can is um, is something that I've really focused on and thought about and, and how do we best do that whilst also maintaining what 
we've found out about ourselves as a team which is when we play our best cricket we know how we go about it um, but progression is, is the main word here that's been a lot of thought process of mine whilst I've had a lot of time away to think about um, taking this team forward yeah and a couple of interesting situations, management situations, really, with, with Jamie Smith, Ben Folkes, uh, Shub Basher, Jack Leach. How, how, how are they being managed, given that they're actually not first choice with their counties? Yeah, it's, again, it's a, it's a tough one. You, you know, in an ideal scenario, you would love for the players that you've picked in the test team to then be playing that role back for their counties. But also having an understanding that counties have their own way of operating for what they think is is their best team and their best makeup. Um, what we don't want to do is, is feel like we're we're making decisions and telling counties what to do with with their players. Um, but it's just about managing that. Um, and again, you know, coming out and, and playing in a test match for someone like Jamie Smith, who played last week in a different role. Mm. Bash obviously missing out because you know Leachy's their number one spinner. That's absolutely fine. We're, we're happy with that, and we've got so much confidence that you know that everyone that we've selected can go out there and um, just sort of make an impact in the game yeah do you think there will be some focus on Smith keeping wicket in- inevitably because he's taken Folks' place inevitably there's always going to be that um, that's that's just the, the way things go um, but you know knowing Jamie's character in the small amount of time that I've known him is that he seems pretty unfazed by um, you know quite a lot I think even last week you know credit to him of um, being selected in the team and then not keeping but then going out and getting 100 and then 70 in the next innings just shows that, that not a lot phases him but um, yeah it's obviously going to be different this week you know in, in the test match arena um, but you know great dressing room for him to come into I think we've just given him the um, the confidence to go out there and just really express himself um, everyone who comes to this dressing room knows that they've got the backing of myself Brendan and the rest of the guys in the dressing room so um, yeah, really looking forward to, to seeing not only him but also Gus Atkinson go this week as well. Yeah, this the last one, looking very chipper and smiley and right. up for it. Is that you're, you're a complete cricketer again? You're, you're, you're bowling, you're getting the ball through the keeper. Yeah, so I'm talking to you, Jonathan. That's, that's what makes me smile. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, but look, it's uh, I've obviously made a big decision to um, to not go to the T20 World Cup to mm. really focus on getting myself right from a bowling point of view. Um, I've worked very, very hard back at Durham um, with the coaches out there and um, I've got myself into a, into a position where I can finally say after a long time that you know I can play the role that I've sort of been known for for yeah. you know 10 years, which is um, batting and being that false seamer. And um, yeah, I've worked very, very hard uh, to get into this position now um, and I know how much me as that fourth seamer um, you know adds to the team um, the shape of the team just looks a lot better when I know that I can bowl um, so yeah it's, um, I'm really excited to get going this week The TMS Podcast from BBC Radio 5 Live Let's just start at the end he, he, he was very relaxed I must say a big smile on his face um, and part of that I'm sure is the fact that he's able to contribute properly again you know there's nothing more frustrating than being out there and he's been very frustrated with that the various injuries that he's had particularly the knee that's prevented him from from bowling at all for for, for so long and now big and back and fresh and fit and uh, a bit more hair I thought than the last time I saw him uh, but that's another point um, but you know he just you could just tell I think Ben, ben Stokes is, in, is, in, is, in, is in, yeah, in, in a good place at the moment with all that's been going on around this test match I think it's almost been overlooked actually how important it is that Ben Stokes is back as an all-rounder and as the fourth seamer, if you think that England actually, they were pretty lucky to get through the Ashes in the way that they did, Moeen Ali wasn't supposed to play, Chris Wokes wasn't really in their plans to begin with, and it was only injuries to Ollie Pope and Jack Leach that sort of balanced out of the team to compensate for that lack of Stokes' bowling. He himself has admitted that England looks such a stronger team with him as that fourth seamer. Three seamers and one spinner is tough four seamers they've got that wiggle room especially with someone like Gus Atkinson playing his first test not 100% sure how they're going to go they can fall back on Stokes if they need to and you'll have seen some great all-rounders through Mm. the years Aggers it completes them doesn't it it when they can do the whole job that they want to do I wouldn't be surprised at all if actually Ben Stokes is batting benefits from the fact that he can one discipline frees up the other yeah Yeah, if, if you do well in one 
you, you, yeah, the odds are it, it, it does bounce back. I, I would finish it in Smith. I think there's going to be a lot of a lot of focus on Smith. That's, that's a that's a big call. I don't know, Fazio, if you quite get this, but here, here, here he is. He doesn't keep wicket for his county. Ben Folks, uh, who Ben Stokes has described as the best keeper in the world, of course, is Surrey's wicket keeper. It's as if someone, well, the, the selectors have kind of opened the Surrey dressing room door, taken the pin out of a grenade, rolled it in there, shut the door, it's gone boom, and said to Alex Stewart there, the manager, good luck, you deal with that one, because I mean, it's, it's an extraordinary decision, really. These things tend to happen when you, you, you've got guys thinking out of the out of the box and I, I think it, it brings up this sort of conundrum as to whether it's England first or county first yeah. uh, because that has been a discussion that has been going on uh, for decades really and it, it really depends on what the think tank in the England team your Brendan McCullum your Ben Stokes and, and whoever else what they see as their priority what what what, what are they focusing upon and as you said whether that that Grenade is now rolling about in the dressing room. Yes. That, that's for Surrey to deal with. It, it's, it's extraordinary, really. And, and for Ben Folks, I guess he probably still would play for Surrey if he wasn't keeping wicket. But it still kind of feels like a bit of a career a career move, isn't it, that's been forced forced on him. Fantastic that the, the England squad came out last Sunday, I think it was. Jamie Smith took a couple of catches for Surrey at yes. third slip <laughs> yes. with Ben Folks keeping wicket. Put simply... Jamie Smith is a bass bowler, mm. isn't he? That yeah. that is what England have seen in his batting. Again, we- I on Australia, they're gonna think he'd be right by then. It was settled in. It was scored some runs. Hopefully, he's kept wicket okay. What they do in Pakistan coming up this winter might be interesting, though. And Absolutely. whether he's good enough to keep wicket there, standing up to two or three spinners, that's 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 for another day. But that's just a, a little a potential pothole in in this plan. England have looked at the total package of the cricketers that have got they have got available to them to bat at number seven and keep wicket and decided that Smith is their man. We know how fantastic Ben Folks is behind the stumps. He had a really good series actually as a wicket keeper yeah. in India, but was exposed when he had to bat with the tail. He had to marshal the tail and try and up the ante slightly. Johnny Bairstow, he needs a break. He's played cricket consistently for a year in all sorts. He doesn't of need form. another break. <laughs> A different kind of break. Um, He needs a rest. Um, He's played cricket consistently for a year. He spent so much time in India. Then he went straight to the World Cup. So much time away from home. He's got a young family. Whether or not we see him again in an England shirt of any kind, I think is up for discussion. But Johnny will certainly think that he can get back playing for England. One thing to note is for for Jamie Smith making his debut as a wicketkeeper here... He's only kept wicket here in T20 cricket right. for Surrey. Now, that is going to be a different job for Definitely. him with the red ball wobbling yep. around, yep. scars like this, with James Anderson, yep. um, all sorts of problems for much more experienced wicket keepers than him. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Atkinson, I think, will go well. I think he's a, lo- I think he's a lovely looking bowler. Nice, easy action, slippery. Uh, he's got a bit of pace. I, I, th- I think, actually, he'll make the step up to test cricket. To, well, we shall see. So, further from Ben Stokes, let's then hear from his opposite number, Craig Brathwaite. Craig, well, welcome back to Lords. I'm um, just... Sorry about the weather. We're keeping our fingers crossed, but actually, it makes an interesting game of cricket. A bit of weather around. Yeah, I mean, obviously, unfortunately, we do weather thus far. Um, hopefully, when the test starts tomorrow, we get some get some good weather. But you know, we look forward to to this test match. It's difficult these days. Have you had one warm up game, and suddenly you're into a, a, a Lord's Test? Is that just kind of the way that modern cricket works? I guess so. But for us, we, we pretty much don't mind. Uh, we want practice game. And the time we had was, was very decent. We had some good practice sessions as well in the middle and, you know, normal net sessions. So I think the pre- preparation was good. I mean, to be honest, you can't complain, <laughs> can't complain at all. No. And your last test match, I mean, we all, we all sat riveted watching that. Of course, it seems a bit of a long time ago now but at, at the Gabba. But it's still very fresh in your memories, I would think. Well, yeah, I mean, it was our last test match and, and, and it was good to get a win, but, you know, that's history. Um, as you said, it's, it's, been, it's a long time ago. So, you know, we got a, a new and a fresh test match tomorrow. So, you know, we got to start well. Yeah, but in terms of confidence, though, to go to, go to the Gabba and beat Australia, that's, that's, that's really quite something. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. And it shows that we have the ability to, to beat international teams. Um, but the key is obviously to do it consistently. And that's what we're working towards. Yeah. I guess looking at your team, depth in bowling, for sure. People might look at the batting and think there's not a lot of experience there. Yeah, I mean, it's facts, you know, not a lot of experience in the, in the batting. Um, but we have a, a lot of young guys who I believe have the ability to, to do well in test cricket, you know, on average above 40. Um, but, you know, we continue to give them the support and 
I believe they will do extremely well. You know all about the challenges of playing here. If you're not used to English conditions, the overhead swinging ball and a certain Jimmy Anderson playing in his last test match, that's going to be quite a challenge, I would think. Yeah, I mean, playing in England, in England is always a challenge, especially, you know, when you get the, the overhead conditions. Um, but, you know, you just, just got to trust yourself. You know, trust your eyes. You know, that's the main thing. It will be a challenge. Playing test cricket is I mean, pretty much always playing against world-class bowlers. So, you know, we, we, we look forward to it, man. You were lining up against Anderson. How's that going to feel? I mean, the crowd, last test match, great bowler. A little bit interesting for you. Yeah, I mean, I look forward to it. He, he's obviously a great of, of the game. And, you know, playing his last test match, you know, we know it'll be a big crowd. And, you know, we look forward to again out there as a team and, and making West Indians pro. What does last one on Jimmy Anderson? What, what, what makes him, from a batting perspective, what, what makes him the great bowler that he is? I mean, obviously he has skill, you know, to move the ball in and out at his will. You know, that, that's obviously seen, you know, for him. And then he's, he's very consistent. You know, he pretty much hits one line of length and then he decides if it's in or out. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing for, for a guy to do that. So, you know, for sure, he's, he's a legend of the game. C- can you see, I mean, are you looking at the, the seam or the shiny side of the ball? Or, I mean, is there, are there any clues as to what he's going to do? No, nah, I know some, some guys look at the, you know, how they, the, the shine or some. But I don't really do that. I just watch the ball when it comes, you know, so you have a couple of split seconds to decide. And yeah, I just I'm big on trusting my eyes, man. So that's Craig Brethwaite uh, talking to me during the during the rain break of practice, and it's been a bit like that here at Lords uh, today. Uh, Fancy Mohammed's here. Um, well, he knows too that I mean, it's, it's, it's the batting. The batting looks vulnerable, doesn't it, for, for for West Indies coming here? And with this one warm-up game, complete change in conditions, it's going to be tough. It's going to be very tough. There's no getting away from it, Agus. The uh, for, for all of that, that, that drama and the, the incredible victory uh, at the Gabba, I mean, you, you, you can't even know six months on, take it in, that it actually happened. Yeah. It, it's, it's, we were all watching, by the way, but everyone was up for it's, that. It's, it's beyond fantasy to, yeah. to think that a team like this one, previous team with Lara and Chander Paul and, and others couldn't do it. And I know you've got a team with, with barely any experience. Uh, no Jason Holder anywhere around and, 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 so, and so many others. Uh, Holder opting out, Kyle Mayers opting out, uh, someone who's called uh, Kyle Mayers a double hundred in Bangladesh in his, in his first test match, opting out yeah. of, of a test match opportunity. And the Western is winning at the Gabba yeah. uh, of all places. So, so yeah, that, that was a, a huge lift, but the reality is the batting. The batting is the concern because uh, the the lack of experience. I mean, if you if you take out Craig Brathwit and Jason Holder, the combined tally of Test matches doesn't even come close to half of what Jimmy Anderson has yeah. going into this Test match. So th- that's the concern, and especially with the English conditions, just that three-day match to get ready for a Test match at Lords and three Test matches overall. That that is really going to be the worry for the West. It's how the batting will cope. Mikhail Louis uh, from St Kitts. Let's, let's, let's hail the first St Kitchen, if I've said that right, uh, to play to play Test cricket. Seven first class games. And he's out there against Jimmy Anderson. Yeah, well, the Shamar jo- they'll say Shamar Joseph just a, a handful of first class games and then five yeah. wickets in his first uh, uh, Test match innings. A, a wicket of Steve Smith first ball. Then that dramatic uh, day uh, at the Gabba. Uh, 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 just for, for, for accuracy, uh, Mikhail Louis is the second Kittishan to play Test cricket. The first is Joey Benjamin for England. 1994. Oh, of course. Okay. Yes, Bo- of course. sadly passed away four years ago yes, yes, uh, from yes. a heart attack. But, uh, but the first to play for the West Indies uh, would be Mikhail Louis. But yes. the first overall, Correct. Joey Benjamin. Yeah, and I uh, mustn't confuse Arthur and either because although it's, it's St. Kitts and Nevis, they like to keep their own little bit of separation there, don't they? And that's been a source of contention between the two islands because it was originally the Tri Island Federation of St. Kitts, Nevis, Anguilla. Right. But then Anguilla broke away, uh, which remains a British colony. Uh, but St. Kitts, for, all, for the fact that they're the bigger island physically, one with population, they've never had someone play test match cricket for the West Indies. And Nevis with 
going back to El Camido Willett, the left arm mm. spinner, Keith Atherton, Stuart Williams, Ronaco Morton, and a couple others, they're the ones producing the test cricketers. It's amazing. Or one the... large rock, basically. <laughs> yeah. not needed, Essentially, it? yeah. While we talk about these, these beautiful little Caribbean islands, let's spare a thought for what has happened. Um, and we were there in, in the Grenadines in May. Uh, it's a beautiful part of the world, lovely people, and the destruction, the devastation that's occurred there. Um, that, no doubt, will be on the minds of, 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 of the players here. It would have to be, because when, when you think about it, and more than anything else, it's not just the ferocity of Hurricane Beryl last week and really devastating those small islands, well, Cariaco, Piti, Martinique, yeah. uh, which are Union. part Union Island, mm. uh, which is part of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and then heading up towards Jamaica and side-swiping Jamaica. Uh, so, so thankfully, they didn't get, get the full brunt of this hurricane because they were faring the worst. The worry is, and we've been talking about this this weather system and global warming and so on, is the most powerful hurricane so early in the in the hurricane season. So the fear is that this is the start of something that's going to be really bad mm. for a lot of people in the Caribbean. And yes, it will be on the minds of these players. But if we could in some way look, look for some sort of positive in it, when West Indies won the Champions Trophy famously against England in September yep. at the Oval, it was just in the aftermath of Hurricane Ivan, oh, which right. devastated Grenada. They hadn't been hit by Hurricane for about 50 years. And they, they were absolutely steamrolled by Ivan and, and Brian Lara and everyone else was talking about that as trying to give the people of Grenada something to smile about. And, well, we all know what happened yeah. in, in the end. Yeah, absolutely. Well, our thoughts very much with everybody uh, there. Well, while you're here, Fazi, I was just doing a little totting up. Uh, it's a bit of a side of interest, really. But just where the balance of the balance of power, I don't know, but, but where the emphasis, certainly in selection of, of these players in the Caribbean now comes. And back in the day, Barbados would be the, the mighty force, Jamaica, of course. Guyana did have a number of, of fine uh, players, mainly batsmen. But they're back at the top of the tree. Four. Four of this squad are from Guyana. Uh, th- just three from Barbados, just one from Antigua, just one from Jamaica. There's St. Kitts, we mentioned a couple. Dominica, two. Uh, and Barbados, three. Your own Trinidad has two. So it's it just feels like a bit of a shift. Is that, is that a fair comment down to the, the south of the Caribbean? To, to an extent, because... Uh Guyana have been the dominant force in our regional first class game for the last seven years. They've won six of the last eight titles uh, and indeed the argument uh, from the Guyanese and you know a bit about the insularity and the, the territorial rivalries is that, you know, we keep winning the titles and you keep picking everybody else, yeah. you know. So, so yes, you're, you're seeing more players from Guyana coming in, into the scene and, in, and indeed in Sharma Joseph, uh, you've got someone who's from really uh, way out there yeah. because Physically, because of the location of where he comes from, Barakara, you've got to go to a boat to get there. Rural in Guyana is very, rural. Very, very rural. Yes. Uh, but a fast bowler, an outstanding young man. Uh, you've got the spin spinner, Gudikesh Moti. You've got players who probably would have been in the team as well, were it not for other issues. Shimron Hetmeyer is a classic example. Mm. He's from Guyana as well. But, but yes, you, you see players from the so-called smaller islands. I mean, when you, you saw Kavem Hodge and Alec Athanas batting together in Australia, it dawned on you, even as a West Indian, that, hang on, you've got two players from Dominica mm. in the same eleven, which would have never happened before. Uh, and, and you've got uh, now Mikhail Louis, his brother Jeremiah Louis, yep. is, is into the squad as well because of the absence of Kim Root. So I, I suppose it's about success uh, or, or imitation being the sincerest form of flattery seeing other players from small islands get opportunities and uh, you, you it's, it's it's a bit of a an, an empty discussion this talk about whether cricket is dying in the caribbean it's not no it, it's it's always been there always will be there yes. it's part of the fabric of our society there are other influences there are other distractions but when, when you see the the intensity of feeling and interest for that f- victory in at the gabba and what is it? What is it prompted as far as interest in the West Indies team and regional cricket? It, it tells you that we shouldn't really be surprised when we see these smaller territories coming to the fore, producing quality cricketers and producing players who hope to deliver on the biggest stage. Yeah, well, it'll be fascinating to see how they all go. I've got a quick line about the bowlers, Fazir, because you, there's some decent bowlers in this setup. I mean, if, if, if there is some cloud around, a little bit of juice in that pitch, they'll bowl well. I think that, that that is what the West Indies are hoping for. That yep. 
is the strong point of this West Indies team. A pity that Kimar Roach yeah. is ruled out with injury, but that allows Jaden Seals to come back in the 11. He was really impressive against South Africa in the Caribbean in 2021. Had some injuries along the way, picked up a fiver against Pakistan, and he's been playing for Sussex in the second division of the county championship, so th- that's some experience there. Shamar Joseph, his start speaks for itself. Alzari Joseph mm. has been leading the charge for about two years so now. senior bowler now. Yeah, yeah. He, he's been very much someone who was a bit of an enigma a lot of talent a lot of ability uh, won the under 19 world cup in 2016 but was in and out didn't seem able to focus but within the last couple of years he's really uh, put the nose to the grindstone and, and really uh, toughed it out for the west Indies. so he's, he's a key man so you've got jason holder hmm. uh, uh, there with with his experience as well and the spin of gulikesh moti i think there was a real discussion about staying with kevin sinclair the offspinner who got a half century at the Gabba and was part of that w- famous victory. But I think because Moti is, is a much more experienced bowler, uh, gives you a lot more with the ball, that's why they've gone with him in the final 11. But, but clearly, I think this is really the, the strong point of this West Indies. And, and the bowlers have to deliver. They've got to take advantage of these conditions here.